latency okay. basically the amount of time which is required by the dispatcher to perform that dispatching operation so okay. it is basically a time used by dispatcher to stop one process and start okay. another one that means we have a ready queue out of this the short term scheduler selects the process to get the cpu so one by one the processes are moved from ready queue to the running state and the cpu is provided to them so once the running state is over suppose the process goes to waiting state after completion of the waiting state the process will come back again to the ready queue so it is somewhere like this this is ready queue or this is my execution method or execution state represented by e and this is my waiting state so the process initially is in the ready queue it will go to execution if suppose a process which is executing over the cpu has to wait for some input output device so it will go to the waiting state once that device work is over the process again moves back to the ready queue so this is how the complete cycle happens and dispatcher has to stop one process which is executing over the cpu when the transferring of control from one process to another process is happening so when this process moves to waiting queue to ready queue there might be some other processes which are also waiting in the queue there can be n number of processes which are waiting in the queue to get the cpu so that process will also move at the end of the queue maybe so once another process is selected so dispatcher will perform this operation stop this process which is executing over cpu and start another one and send the one from the ready queue to the execution state so that is the meaning of the dispatch lat latency means time to stop that current process on execution mode and move a incoming process to the cpu so that is dispatch latency then we have various types of scheduling techniques or uh, these are basically referred as the scheduling decisions which we are taking so scheduling decisions can be preemptive and non preemptive what is the meaning of preemptive preemptive means snatching something forceful snatching non preemptive means we cannot do forceful snatching so while we are scheduling the cpu to a process or giving the cpu to a process one process as we have said in the previous case it has to be stopped so whether that stopping is preemptive or non preemptive we have to decide based on that the algorithm of selecting a process from the ready queue to the cpu will be decided so the idea is that in case of preemptive scheduling the cpu can be preempted from a running process forcefully and the highest priority process should always be the process that is currently utilized so highest priority process will get the current utilization of the cpu and the cpu can be preempted from a running process while it is executing non preemptive says that cpu cannot be preempted from the running process till the process completes or leave cpu by itself there are two situations in which the process can leave the cpu either the process will complete itself or it will leave the cpu because it requires some other thing to be executed like suppose the process requires some input output device and based on that it has to wait in the waiting state so if it is in the waiting state there is no requirement of that process to be in the execution state so it will wait in the waiting queue till the input output device becomes available and in the meanwhile another process can be scheduled from the short term scheduler to the execution mode so that is why in case of non preemptive we say that cpu cannot be snatched from a running process until unless the process itself completes complete hone ke baad to execute your, after completion the process will be executed itself so based on that it will leave the cpu or it will leave the cpu by itself so there are two situations in case the cpu is itself released by the process otherwise the scheduling is non preemptive so these are the differences between preemptive and non preemptive scheduling then while scheduling there are various terms which are being utilized or various times that we need to know throughput throughput is basically the number of processes that are completed that complete their execution per unit time we are saying that suppose there are n processes in the system which are coming into the system so in suppose 10 minutes of time how many processes are being completed complete their execution till they are being available in the system so that is throughput so suppose i can say throughput units can be 100 processes per unit or per unit of time 
Then turnaround time, it is the total time required to execute a process, like the process initially is entering into the system, that is in the ready a new, a new state, then we have ready state, and it has to wait in the ready state till the CPU gets allocated to that process. So during that wait time, it can be any amount of time for the process to wait. Similarly, in case the process moves to execution state, then to waiting state, then to ready state, so it will take an amount of time. So that time, along with the execution time, all complete will be your turnaround time. So turnaround time can be your time from the start of that process entering into the system and time for that process to complete its execution and end from that system. So that total amount of time waiting plus executing will be your turnaround time. Even the response time is also included into turnaround. What is waiting time? Waiting time is the amount of time the process has to wait in the ready queue or in the waiting state. Can be both time. Then we have response time. Response time can be amount of time a process takes when the request was submitted until the first response is provided. Means first response of getting the CPU. So that is the meaning of response time. So response is when uh, response is completed when the process gets the CPU. We are not talking about output, but we are talking about the intermediate output. We are not talking about the actual output, not talking about the completion of that process. Response time is like, suppose I have given the process or entered the process at 10 a.m. It is getting the CPU at 10.02. So after two minutes, it is getting the CPU. So that is, that is the response time of the system. So it is like, suppose you click a particular application and you are getting the response after suppose 15 or 20 seconds. You say that system is very slow. So why the system is slow? Because response time is very large. So that is basically the response time. When the first input or first output is going to be received by the user. So that is response time. Then what is starvation and what is aging? That is another important question. So starvation is basically indefinite waiting by a process for resources as resources are being allocated to some other process. So starvation is basically, suppose I'm giving the CPU to a process and after that the process itself release the CPU because it has to wait for some other resource which has to be occupied. And suppose that resource is occupied by some other process and that process is not releasing it. So the incoming process will have to indefinitely wait for that resource to be allocated because Due to some reason, that process which is requiring that resource is not getting it. So the system will or the process will go into the starvation mode. Then there is a technique which is called as aging, which is to prevent or avoid starvation. What we can do is we can increase the priority of the starved process. Whatever starved processes are present in the system, we can increase their priority, which has to wait for indefinite amount of time. I can increase the priority of a process and the CPU will be given to that process. Because CPU also works based on the priority of different processes in the system. If a system uh, process is having higher priority, then compared to the user process, so it will be the system process which will be getting the CPU. So aging is a technique in which we can increase the priority of a starved process or indefinite weighted process. And based on that increase in priority, it might get the CPU. So that is the technique of aging. Then what are the different process in CPU scheduling algorithms? There are different uh, processor CPU scheduling algorithms which are discussed in operating system. First one is the most common is first come first serve means as the processes come into the system as per their incoming time first come and first serve. So a process one can be here, two can be here we can be here. This is the queue which I am creating of processes. And this is the one which is initially coming into the system. So it will get the CPU. Until it completes, the CPU cannot be given to any other process. So first this one will complete, then second one will complete, then third one will get the CPU, then fourth one will get the CPU. So first come and first get served by the CPU. That is the idea behind this first come first serve. So that means if a process P1 is very large, so P2 has to wait for a longer duration of time. So that is the idea behind the use of this first come first serve, which might create 
long delays for incoming processes. Then we have shortest job first technique. Shortest job first says that out of all the processes which are entering into the system, which are present in the job queue, we have to select the shortest job and schedule that over the CPU. So based on the amount of time requiring by that process, we have to schedule that first. So hypothetically it is possible but not in the actual sense because in actual sense how much we know that the process requires this much amount of memory. So these are some situations in case we know that and we want to perform simulation of the system based on this technique and the CPU is being scheduled among processes based on this technique. So we can say that the shortest job first is giving this much uh, efficiency in the system if it is implemented. So for those situations we can assume that we know the uh, actual completion time of the process. Then next is your priority scheduling. It is one of the technique in which we use a priority value apart from other parameters to schedule a process. So while scheduling a process there are various parameters which are being used. So parameters can be like CPU time which is also referred as burst time. So CPU time can be there which is burst time. CPU time or burst time is basically the time required by a process to execute over the CPU for completing its operation. So total amount of CPU time which is required by a process which is also termed as burst time. And then we have something which is called as the response time or you can say arrival time. Arrival time is basically when the process arrives in the system. Suppose it arrives in the system starting at 0 millisecond or 1 millisecond Generally, we take the time in terms of milliseconds, units are milliseconds in these type of scheduling algorithms. Okay. In case we have millisecond as the time, so arrival time can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, even 1.5, those type of your arrival times. Then there is another criteria based on which the scheduling happens, which is termed as priority. So that is where, which is being used in the priority scheduling. Priority can be suppose in a system priority of processes can be from 1 to 10. So what is the initial priority given to a process based on its worth? Whether it is a system process, user process and what, what type of resources it is going to be utilizing. Based on that the priority can be decided or based on the user level uh, processes or the kernel level processes the priority can be decided by the operating system itself or in some programming languages where we can provide the priority of a particular process by our own coding. So in that case the priority can also be provided. So based on this priority the processes are scheduled means the process with the highest priority will get the CPU first then the process with the next priority value then next then next and so on. If you talk about the shortest job first and first come first serve. First come first serve is always non preemptive means we cannot snatch the CPU from the currently running process. Otherwise, there is no utilization of the first come first serve. Because first come first serve says that the process which comes first into the system should execute completely over the CPU. Then the next process can get the CPU. So it will increase the response time of every incoming process which are coming after the first process. Because they will be only getting the CPU once their processes which are ahead of them will get the CPU. So first term first serve is always non preemptive. If we talk about shortest job first, it can be preemptive because based on the shortest job, we are preempting the CPU. And uh, in case of non preemptive also, we can implement this shortest job first because in case of non preemptive, we are saying that once the CPU is given to a process, even if the incoming process is of shortest job requirement or shortest time requirement, so we cannot give the CPU to that process. So in case of preemptive shortest job first case, what we are saying is suppose a process is running into the system or there are two processes in the system. One is taking 5 millisecond of time, another is taking 2 millisecond of time. There are two processes. So once they enter at the same time, the process with 2 millisecond time will get the CPU. Suppose the process is getting the CPU and in the meanwhile another third process comes into the system in one millisecond of time. So in case of preemptive shortest job first, the incoming third process with one millisecond of time is the shortest job first. So it will get the CPU and the initial process with two millisecond of time will be preempted. 
So that is the case of preemptive shortest job first. In case of non-preemptive shortest job first, even if the incoming process is of lower time, the current running process will not be giving the CPU to the incoming process. So once the process is given the CPU, it cannot be snatched. 